Who is, is that Annie? <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, we did, yeah it is. I'm not ready. Oh, ten. Well, she was a person of her generation, you know, the, um, the World War II generation. And like I mentioned at the service, she was born in 1915. That's, that's a hard time to even, you know, think about a hundred years ago, you know, the, the second year of World War I. And she grew up in a time, you know, that's difficult for us to imagine. No airplanes, no cars, you know, barely running water and electricity in houses. Um, she grew up in the Philippines, at, you know, when the Philippines was a territory of the United States that had been taken by the United States in the Spanish-American War. So, um, you know, she, she, it was a, just a completely different time. She was lucky enough to get a really great education. Um, and she lived, um, you know, in the Philippines when the, when the war took place. And, and I think that had a huge impact on her life. Um, she was lucky enough to have relatives here in upstate New York and, and the ability to repatriate to the United States. And that's how she ended up here. And, um, but when she came here, she already was, you know, well-educated. She had been trained in, to work in business. And so she was able to, you know, make a life for herself. Um, you know, and I think she really thought of herself as, as kind of a, a survivor in the sense that I, I never heard her complain about any of the hardship that she went through or, or uh, um, she always like people had mentioned she had this positive attitude about life in general and she could always seem to find joy in things, you know, simple things, whether it was a sunrise or, or uh, um, nature or Ithaca. She loved Ithaca. She did. Um, and she always felt that she was always thankful um, about her life. And um, the survive part that you said, 
Um, I asked her how she survived being a prisoner of war, squatting like that with, you know, barely any food. And she said that she would say to herself again and again, I will survive. And she did. <laughs> we knew that she'd been in a prisoner of war camp, and but I didn't understand the uh, um, significance of the Medal of Freedom. And, and uh, at the time, it was a little different than the Presidential Medal of Freedom today, which is given directly by the President. The Medal of Freedom after World War II was a very important award, and still the most prestigious in the terms of being given to somebody, that, a citizen. Um, but um, I didn't realize, um, you know, the entire significance of, of what she had been involved in. And the story that unfolded about um, her her first husband um, and being awarded the Navy Cross, that's a really big deal too as well. And, and, and then Colonel Engelhardt, her boss, who um, was a Bataan uh, death march survivor, um, and the fact that, you know, he, because he survived, he was the one that nominated my mother for the for the Medal of Freedom, which it, it's all sort of tied up in this strange story of, um, of uh, you know, how people's relationships have such an impact on, on their lives. And, and like I said, it's even interesting that our parents met at his sister's house in New York. I mean, so how that all, you know, came together is, is I think, an amazing story, I mean, of, of just how people can impact in other people's lives through their actions and, and their deeds. And uh, um, and they remained friends yeah. until he passed away. Yeah, he passed away in his 90s.